In this video, we look at the curious real-life story of Chip Chan. Now, the mystery of Chip Chan has been around for years, and many people have covered it. However, we've never really talked about it before. And since the case has been cold for a couple of years, we'll try to unravel the truth from the theories, and look at the effort some viewers of her live feeds have gone to, to try and help her. It all began in 2008, when a live stream was discovered during an unsecured webcam thread on 4chan. It appeared to show a woman lying motionless in the corner of a rubbish strewn room. The woman didn't move for over 12 hours, prompting many to believe she was dead. The belief sparked attention on the site, and was the start of an extraordinary story that is still going on to this day, and is one of the original internet rabbit holes. Over the next decade, the Korean woman, nicknamed Chip Chan, continued to livestream 24 hours a day on various platforms. It appears she spent most of her life in a rubbish strewn apartment, in view of various cameras set up around her. She often slept motionless for over 12 hours, or sat or lied down in the most uncomfortable looking positions for hours on end. Sometimes she would walk around in disguise, or display bizarre messages about her plight, all written in Korean. She is aware of the cameras, and the streams are sometimes accompanied by audio clips, where you can hear her informing viewers about P and the mind control weapon program she claims she finds herself in. As people became more and more intrigued about Chip Chan, various blogs and writings that she had written were uncovered, and her full story slowly started to emerge. She claims that in 1999, after being stalked for three years, the police broke into her home. They then rendered her unconscious and implanted a mind control weapon in a cartilage bone three centimeters off of her ankle bone. She also believes they implanted a second chip under her left eyebrow. Since then, she's been held against her will by a police officer she calls P, who controls her thoughts through the chip in her ankle. P is able to control her sleep, and that is why she sleeps for around 12 hours per day in what looks like uncomfortable positions. And he has complete control over her life, and through the chip, has access to what she sees, says, and hears. In the videos, Chip Chan looks rather unkept, in poor health, and is extremely lethargic. She often has outbreaks of skin rashes and wounds of unknown causes, which she uploads pictures and videos of. She claims that she cannot leave the apartment due to the chip, which has the ability to make her fall unconscious at the will of the operator. However, over the years, it's thought she has left her apartment occasionally and has changed residence several times. In her videos and blogs, Chip Chan says she does not try to contact the police for fear that the corrupt police officer P will find out. She has expressed that she needs viewers to help her deal with P by spreading the word. She is also known to have responded to viewers via mail and comments on her blogs and streams. One of the signs she has scattered in her room has been translated as saying the stalker uses this skill from 2006. I have slept for 20 hours every day since then. I do not know what has happened while I sleep. I have always been afraid of sleeping. She seems to be asking for help and asks her viewers to spread her story. Although to date, for whatever reason, nobody's found a way of rescuing her, if that is indeed what she wants. In 2016, she created a YouTube channel called Mind Control Weapon, and started streaming shorter live events, in addition to her continuous feeds on Korean platforms. The YouTube channel followed a similar theme to her other streams, with lengthy accounts of her plight written in Korean in the description. She uploaded pretty much daily, and started putting some of the descriptions in English, with links and timestamps to her continuous feeds on Kakoa TV, with information about what was happening to her. She also put links to an English and Korean blog. Some of it was pretty disturbing, with claims that the Korean Mafia and the police, who she referred to as pigs, were breaking into her house and humiliating her. Chip Chan was making some serious allegations, and a lot of her followers were very concerned about her well-being. Then, on February 26, 2020, as quickly as she came, Chip Chan stopped streaming on her YouTube channel. The abrupt stop caused her fans to question what had happened to her, and the subreddit dedicated to her plight went into overdrive. User Spudden, who seemed to be in regular contact with her, commented that P came and broke her stuff. 
and the CIA and FBI had forced her to stop all her streams. A similar message appeared on her blog and description of her videos. However, less than a month after she stopped streaming on YouTube, an English-speaking YouTube channel was created, also called Mind Control Weapon, that again started live streaming. However, we are not sure if this one has been created by a fan or Chip Chan herself. It basically reiterates what she says on her other channel, just in English. Neither of the channels has any recent activity on them, although it seems she is still streaming on Kakawa TV. So what is going on, and who is the woman dubbed Chip Chan? Well, over the years, there have been several theories, and we'll take a look at a few of them. Firstly, it's been established that she doesn't like to be referred to as Chip Chan. Rather, she likes to be known as Jane Rowe. Although it's thought her real name is Kim, and her age is now around 50. It's believed she currently lives in Seoul, South Korea. Apparently, this information has been confirmed by one of her neighbours. The same neighbour also claims she was with her parents when they died several years ago in an accident, and she was pregnant at the time and miscarried. Jane was very guilty and blames herself for what happened. Now, we cannot confirm this information is correct, although the alleged neighbour who made the claim on one of her live feeds was abruptly blocked after posting the comment. It's worth pointing out that Jane has said through various communications she has with her followers that her parents did not die in an accident as many have reported, although it is thought they are not alive. Jane also understands and speaks English, which apparently she learned when she lived in Canada. The most popular consensus is that Jane has a mental illness because if she were being held by captives, as she claims, it would seem strange that she would have access to the internet and be allowed to live stream 24 hours a day. It also appears that she leaves the house on occasions. It's been suggested that Jane has paranoid schizophrenia and that P is actually her care worker who checks up on her and helps her with everyday needs. However, Jane has always claimed that she films her life so she can catch P on camera when he does something abusive. And although sometimes there is someone in the apartment with Jane, it appears they are either trying to tidy up or give her food. Some have suggested that P is a family friend who has looked after Jane since her parents passed away. Whatever the truth is, P is most likely someone who's been designated to give Jane regular food and welfare checks. It is known that schizophrenia is notoriously difficult to treat and the medications used are very powerful and tend to not always be effective, often causing horrific side effects that include extreme sedation, restlessness, seizures, and even worsening psychosis, amongst other things. Although it's unclear whether Jane is on any medication at all, and her behaviour, if she does have schizophrenia, suggests she probably isn't. As well as P, a lady often appears in her streams, and it's believed she is Jane's landlady, who also helps care for her. But she is seen more favourably by Jane, who has mentioned her in a correspondence with various people. It's possible that due to her paranoid delusions, Jane sees anyone trying to care for her, including medical professionals, as people that are stalking or intending to harm her. She likely hates P the most because he is the one doing the majority of necessary care. Jane has confirmed in her blog and via email that she is financially okay, so it can be assumed P is her paid carer. But what if it's all an art project? One of the more outrageous theories is that the whole thing is an art project, possibly something known as durational art, which basically means when some people do something extreme or odd for an extended period of time, often for no apparent reason. There are lots of YouTube channels who do this. For instance, the man who sits and smiles for four hours straight, or the guy who eats pictures of Nicolas Cage every day. It's something that has been around for years, but is more well known nowadays because the projects are often streamed online. Although we think in Jane's case, this is unlikely, although not completely out of the question. Then there are those that believe Jane is telling the truth. This belief is held by many of her Korean viewers, as some of the things she has been saying make sense to them. At one point, Jane even claims she would give away a substantial amount of money as a reward to anyone who helped expose the cop P and his corruption. According to Jane, the offer attracted some interest and motivated people to seek out the truth, but as far as we know, nothing came of it. 
Jane's claim about her implant and how P controls her at will seems very far-fetched, and apart from Jane asserting her beliefs for over a decade now, there is no concrete evidence to back them up, and they are likely a result of her mental illness. So in conclusion, we think Jane's parents either died and the inheritance pays for her care, or they are alive but have distanced themselves from her, but pay for her care. Sadly, mental health problems are viewed as shameful in many Asian families, however, financial support is still usually given. Through our research, we know Jane is known to the local authorities, but she refuses treatment, and they can't force her to get help unless she's suicidal or homicidal. However, they do keep an eye on her and will intervene if things become dangerous. Despite what Jane says, she's not being held against her will and does go out into the community occasionally and receives as much help as she allows to be given. She isn't alone, there are plenty of people keeping an eye on her situation. In some of her streams, Jane appears to have wounds or injuries, particularly to her feet. Apparently these are self-inflicted. Jane picks at the skin and looks for proof of the chip. When she can't find it, she freaks out and talks about it moving around inside her foot, or she'll point out random areas on her foot and become very distressed if viewers tell her they can't see it. Jane's paranoid schizophrenia makes her believe everyone is after her, including those trying to help her. And in her own head, she truly believes that the government is slowly trying to plant chips in everyone in order to control them. She also believes it's not an option to have the chip removed or she'll likely be killed, and that P would knock her unconscious, preventing her from doing so. We personally don't believe the chip exists, but Jane certainly does. People with schizophrenia genuinely do see and hear the things they are claiming. They are not lying, their brain genuinely makes them see and hear the hallucinations. So to Jane, she really does see this chip and believes it's controlling her, and if she tries to have it removed, the hospital staff would remove the chip in her foot and then just plant it again in a different part of her body. Without therapy and medication, Jane is never going to stop believing these delusions, but she legally has the right to refuse help, so there isn't much anyone can do. It seems unless she does receive medical care, Jane will continue to assume everyone trying to help her is lying to her and working for P. In Jane's live feeds, it's obvious she keeps her apartment fairly cluttered and sometimes things seem to fall down and her camera moves. This is likely her landlord or her carer just trying to tidy up. It's also obvious on some of her YouTube videos that they aren't in real time and some editing has been done. It's quite sad to see a human being living that way. Her life has been on a constant loop now for over 12 years. Jane is clearly mentally unwell, and in South Korea, it is not unusual for people suffering from a mental illness to use the internet as an outlet for their thoughts. Jane live streaming is her outlet. Although the viewers that watch her want to try and save her, it appears she doesn't want to be saved. She just wants people to believe her. Jane is a prisoner of her mind, but she is not a prisoner of anyone else. Watching Jane often curled up in uncomfortable positions or sleeping for hours on end is difficult to watch and compels people to want to find answers or reach out to help. But in reality, by reacting to her claims and watching her like she is an animal in a zoo is not the answer. Help is there for her if she wants it, but at the moment it seems she doesn't. And sad as it seems, she could continue streaming and making unfounded claims for many years to come. To this day, she still live streams on Kakoa TV, and in a recent plea to one of her followers who posted on Reddit, she is asking someone to stream her on YouTube. We hope no one takes her up on our offer, as it will continue to feed into her delusions, whereas in reality, she is a mentally ill lady who needs expert medical help. So, that's an examination and analysis of the mystery of Chip Chan the South Korean woman who's live streamed 24 hours a day for over a decade. We hope you found this video interesting, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.